Okay, nice. Peace be to you all. Woof. That's not what I can. Oh, my here. So I do have my long run. I have, I think, another four miles to go. Um, it's about 30 degrees. So I haven't warmed up a bit. It was in the teens in the beginning. Here the beautiful Rock Creek Park in Washington, D.C. What segues to this topic? Um, so today is Sunday. It is uh, January 23rd. So there is a a uh, protest. Maybe I'll call it a gathering um, of people who are against the vaccine mandate. And I thought it'd be a good time to talk about my experience with COVID and the um, and the vaccine. Hey guys, sorry. Um, I'm a hospitalist PA, physician associate in DC, and I I take care of people who have COVID and have had COVID. Um, hey, all right. So, um, and many of my friends and colleagues have have had COVID also. Um, just for transparency's sake, it has been about a year since I received my COVID vaccine. Um, one and two, I got Moderna. And uh, I was hesitant at first, I have to be honest. You know, and uh, you know, for many reasons. Um, I was a little boy when the Tuskegee experiment was still going on. The Tuskegee syphilis experiment. Um, that was black men who had syphilis and were not given the treatment for it, even though it existed. The doctors just watched them, <laughs> you know, I guess, you know, progress in its various stages and pass it to their wives and girlfriends. It's really horrible. But anyway, I digress. So, um, with this COVID vaccine mandate, um, you've got arguments on both sides. Or and against you got people put up their own research you got experts on for and against people with a bunch of degrees and have published research I guess um, I got the vaccine because I didn't I wasn't afraid for myself I was afraid of getting it and being asymptomatic or low symptomatic and passing it on to uh, my family or um, my you know my very worse actually my very frail patients we have a nursing home connected to our our hospital it's in the same building and there's a lot of frail elderly and some of my patients are elderly we had patients in their past 80 hooked up to mechanical ventilators so I didn't want to give it to them I didn't know if they would be able to survive that. I, I, you know, I couldn't deal with that, that, uh, that burden of guilt that happened to one doctor who, who gave it. It was traced back to her. She'd given it to her patients inadvertently, of course. So that's why I got it. Um, and it's interesting. I shared that with you, the viewing community, and I got trolled by some people, which was like, dude, I mean, hey, do your own thing. I mean, you don't have to make disparaging marks of remarks about me I, I did what I did to help other people um so I thought because some of my colleagues have gotten COVID I guess with the Omicron because they're and they're triple vaxxed like me so I will say this I am not in favor of of people being forced to put things in their body that they don't want to be put in their body. Hey, how are you? Oh, good, good, you good, good. Um, I, I, there's something very un-American or unhuman, inhuman about that. That's just my opinion. I, I think I'm still entitled to an opinion. I hope. Hope this doesn't come back to haunt me. I do have to uh, <laughs> renew my my uh, medical license in another. <laughs> by the end of this year. Hi there. Um, but, uh, you know, that's... I, I think that um, we have to try as best as possible to uh, maintain some 
level of civility amongst each other. If not for others outside of our country, at least for our fellow Americans. I mean, my God. You know, January, this is the month of January, so we had the uh, anniversary, if you could call it that, of the Capitol takeover. In which people were killed on both sides. Officers and the folks breaking into the Capitol. It's another topic, though. But uh, I just, I really, I... I may be perceived as a fence straddler, somebody who takes neither side, but I really think we have to be civil to each other um, in as much as possible. And I say this as a healthcare provider. You know, I have patients of different lifestyles and do a different things that I may, with which I may not agree, but I still want to render good quality health care to them and be civil to them at the very least and be respectful to them even if I don't agree with them no matter how, how vehemently so. Yeah, I think we lose something we relinquish something of our humanity when we do that. You know, uh, I don't really go to protest anymore. I invited my kids, you know, they're young adults. So like, my daughter said, no, you know, well, people go to these protests and they just start screaming at each other. And they start <laughs> throwing hands. It's, you know, somebody breaks out a gun. It's just, what for? And we see some really ugly sides of, of humanity in this country. In, in very, very recent history in the past five years, whether it's a race matter or health matter or something. Oh, good God, look at this hill. Look at it. That's crazy. That is a steep hill. Okay, but uh, I am, I personally, well, I'll say this, I've not had any side effects thus far <laughs> from, the, uh, from the COVID vaccine. I think that people would be less hes hesitant if the pharmaceutical companies would at least incur some level, no matter how small, some level of of uh, accountability should people it should people get you know debilitating adverse side effects you know including death <laughs> you know i used to help run a, a clinical trials um that was one of the things i did as a pa and uh you know we had a whole adverse reaction we had inclusion and exclusion criteria for the uh, research participants because we were giving them, we were giving them an experimental drug. And, and I'm not saying the vaccine's experimental. I don't want to get into all, all that stuff. Uh, but it was something that people were putting inside of their body. The, uh, and they had the right to know the possible side effects. Um, and even after, after we finished the, uh, the trials, we still had, to, well, I was responsible for doing something called, uh, um, it's uh, post-clinical trials, um, adverse reactions. I forgot the acronym, but, um, you know, if the person turns purple within <laughs> six months of the uh, trials being finished, you know, I got to call the person and say, listen, have you, any, uh, have you experienced anything unusual? Yeah, I turned purple. Okay, I got to report that as a potential adverse side effect of that, of that, uh, of that particular drug, if you consider turning purple and an adverse side effect. Um, but you know, there's got to be a lot of integrity on the part of the pharmaceutical companies, and I think that's one of the issues that uh, people are having, and rightly so. Rightly so, I believe. You know, I did research before also, and I had to do something called IRB exemption, Internal Review Board exemption. Um, I'll talk about that later, but uh, I get my main point is really trying to respect people You know, I think it was one of our founding fathers who said um, I disagree with everything this person says, but I defend their Ability to say it to the death hey there or the right to say it to the death and That to me is a very American principle. And I say this is one of the uh, progeny of a former slaves, <laughs> you know, as many people 
who didn't enjoy their full rights and citizenship as citizens in this country. Um, but that's it for now. Ooh, yeah. It's, you know, these are trying times in which we live. They're always trying times, but we have to try to be the best that we can. Let's see for now. Look at this tree. That is so dangerous. It's beautiful here. Anyway, I wish you guys the best of success in your positive endeavors. If you're interested in being a PA or a health educator or you're an avid trail runner and just have some thoughts, feel free to leave something in the comment section or you can contact me on Instagram. All right, that's it for now. Peace. God bless you.